Hi everybody, it's Taco here, coming at you with another Titanfall 2 video and all that. Um, this is going to be a more unscripted video, uh, just detailing my ratings for all the weapons and the Titans and and from you know like the or the ordinances and stuff like that. Since I believe there's going to be no more balance changes for this game, so I just kind of wanted to give a final, okay, this is good, this is bad, something like that. So. Here's how it's going to be rated. As I'm going to have from S to F tier, if you want to call it tier. It's more just a rating, if anything. So S is like godlike. Why would you not ever use this? Uh, you're, you're stupid if you don't use it. Um, and then everything else is like A, B, C, D, and F. So it's basic school grading after that. Um, so And obviously with all the whole pluses and regular stuff like that. So... Yeah, that's how it's going to work. Uh, hopefully there will be no F stuff because I'm more just making this up on the fly. Just giving it a uh, rating here and there. So let's just get right into it because I have nothing else to say. So let's start with the assault rifles. Um, and what better to start with the jack of all trades, the R101 slash R201. Now I'm going to give that an A-. minus. The R101 used to be one of those weapons where you would run around with your head cut off, just shooting everything in sight, painting the landscape with bullet holes, just blasting everything out of existence kind of thing. And they have since nerfed that by increasing its hipfire accuracy and uh, making its view kick and recoil go up a bit. So it's a little less uh, easy to control like it used to be when this game first came out. And I can't blame them because I wouldn't want it to turn into Titanfall 1 again where literally everyone used the carbine and everything else was pretty much outclassed. Um, but it's not a bad weapon. It's definitely not a bad weapon. Uh, you can still use it, but you have to be much more aimy with it. Um, I'm sure you console players understand that since you guys don't really like to run around on walls and stuff unlike PC. Uh, but R101, definitely a good weapon still. Uh, I would definitely recommend you use it. But I'm sure you don't really need anybody to recommend that to you because everybody uses it. So <laughs> let's move on to the next weapon, which is the Hemlock. I am going to give that a B plus. Now, if you came up to me a month after this game came out and you asked me what the Hemlock would be, definitely would have been an S tier. Like, oh my gosh, the, uh, the Hemlock was just... So amazing. It was so good. Um, but they have since nerfed it. It's no longer a one burst kill, especially with amped weapons. Um, uh, yeah, it's one of those weapons, another, yeah, another one of those weapons you want to hunker down, find yourself a nice campsite, put your bush wookie suit on, and just camp till the cows go moo, aim down your sights. And uh, definitely not one of those run and gun weapons. It, it's hip fire is about as wide as Russia. Um, you you don't want to run around with that, and that's why <coughs> it comes in as a B plus instead of maybe in the A. I'd like it to be in an A. I'd like most of the weapons to be an A, but the Hemlock is good at what it does, and that is basically locking down an area, making sure no one comes out with its high damage, but it's crappy accuracy at close range because if, if anybody comes into you at, at close range and they're shooting you you're gonna die most likely you got to have a backup plan with the hemlock like maybe a 2016 or a uh an re45 just to to back you up in those close range situations because the hemlock will just completely poop out on you in that so yeah um coming to a better uh weapon in terms of camping and logging down an area the g2a4 the bane of all console players existence this has since got a nerf um but it doesn't detract from how good it is still it is it is a great weapon if you can aim that's basically what it is it is one of those semi-auto rifles that verging on sniper rifle but a uh, good rifle nonetheless it is one of those medium range rifles that I'll find myself using in like maybe Homestead or Forward Base Kodai. Uh, definitely a long range map uh, weapon. You want to use it in that situation. But 
It comes out to pretty much the same problems as the Hemlock, in that if you're close range, your hip fire is going to completely screw you over, and uh, anybody with an EVA 8 or a R97 is just going to completely blast you out of existence. So you want to have one of those backup plans with the, uh, with the G2A4, but still, definitely a good weapon. Definitely deserving of its A- status. And lastly, we're going to come to the last of the assault rifles, the flatline. I'm going to give this a B. Uh, the flatline offers great damage. Not going to lie, easily one of the best damage profiles in the game. But you kind of have to spray and pray with this one. And even that can give mixed results. Um, because of its, its crazy horizontal recoil, it, it's, it's hard to hit anybody at long range or even medium range I find it much harder um, but it's raw damage man oh when 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 the weapon wants to hit your target you will be just praising the heavens just oh my gosh it is so good in that sense that it has great damage but it's the problem with the flatline is just hitting your target that that is its one detraction and that's why I put I put it at a B because sometimes this weapon will work, and sometimes it will not. And that it's more of a roll the dice kind of thing. So, that is the flat line. Now we're going to move on to the SMGs. And we are going to start with what I would say is arguably the best primary, the car. This will easily come in as an A+. Almost S tier, gotta say, but... What is keeping it from S tier is that it, it's kind of crap at long range. Uh, and some of you may be, be like, what are you talking about? The car is good at pretty much every range. Uh, recently, I found since the nerf to all the SMGs uh, damage that the, the car isn't good at far range where you can just snipe anybody across the map like you used to be able to. Uh, the car can't do that anymore, but it is still easily the best weapon. It, it's it's controllable, it's got great damage, good magazine capacity, great for run and gun. Hip fire is, is phenomenal, possibly the best in the game. It is the tryhard's perfect weapon, and I would suggest anybody pick this up. Uh, it, it is so good. Oh my gosh, it is, it is so good. Uh, but that is the car. Next, we're going to come to the alternator. Now, I'm going to put the alternator at an A. It, it, it's still a good weapon. I'm sure many of you would be like, oh my gosh, Taco, you're such a moron. This is total S tier, A plus material, but A, a is still good. I, I, the alternator is good at what it does, and that is high damage and better recoil. It simply, if I were to sum up the alternator, it would be the flat line, but better. It's got better range, it's much more controllable because you can just tap fire it and basically negating its horizontal recoil. You have good fire rate, its magazine is, is somewhat okay, um, its hip fire is great, it is so good, um, and it basically just offers good damage, that's, that's basically what it does. It's also a, a great sniping tool if you know how to tap fire it. Um, yeah, so alternator, good weapon, definitely pick it up. A, an A, uh, it is an A okay gun. Uh, let's come to the Volt. Uh, as much as I would love to put the Volt in an A, uh, it is only going to scrape out to a B, possibly a B minus maybe. Now the problem with the Volt is that it's one of those uh, far range SMGs that you can, it's controllable and. Um, great at range but the problem is that the r101 merely exists which does that way better than the volt could ever do it uh its ads is kind of weird it's one of those hip fire weapons but it's just not good at at range its damage is kind of pitiful at range i get what respawn was trying to go for was that far at range but kind of bad at close range kind of SMGs, but there are better weapons that do that. And that's the problem. I That's why I feel that the Volt is a B, because there are weapons that do that better. It's, it's not a bad weapon. I, I wish it could be better, but it's not bad as it is. It's just everything else does it 
does its job better. And that's the Volt's plight. Anyway, we're, now we come to the R97, which I'm sure Uber Panzerhund is probably rolling in his grave. Uh, he'll probably chew me out for saying this, but I believe the R97 is an A-. Yeah, an A-. Not an A+, not S tier, not, not even an A. I think it's an A-. Now, why is that? Um, it is not as good as it was as a full auto laser beam killing everything in sight uh, kind of weapon it was a couple months ago before uh, Frontier Defense came out. That It was so good then. Uh, but now I believe it's been properly nerfed. It's got a very far damage thing added to it, making it so it's, it's not good at its uh, full auto laser beaming anymore. It kind of came out to where Respawn wanted it to be in the first place, which is one of those uh, chainsaws that'll just rip everything to shreds at close range, but kind of sucks at long range kind of thing. Um, its rate of fire is phenomenal. It is the fastest firing weapon in the game. At least I think it is. I think it just beats out the Devotion when it's fully ramped up. Um, it's so good in that sense, but I put it at an A- merely because it is bad at long range now um it it just doesn't fulfill that like it used to anymore which is good which is why i'm putting it at an a minus because i think it is good the way it is it's fine um it's not that great anymore still a good try hard weapon still a good run and gun weapon tip fire is good you can still freaking jack yourself up on stim and just run around blasting everything out um but in terms of long range, it is terrible still, and we're going to keep it at that. So R97, A-. Let's move on to the LMGs. We only have three entries, the first being the Spitfire, and I would believe that is an A. It is an A weapon. Um, easily the best LMG, to me at least. I believe it is the best. It's got great damage. You slapped amped weapons on this. You're doing two, three-shot kills to anything that moves. Um, it's hip fire is kind of lackluster, but that's not even what it was meant to do in the first place. Um, it's, it's recoil is very controllable. You, uh, it's iron sights are kind of meh. It, it, it's one of those, it's another one of those weapons where it's, it's, uh, stay on the ground, not run around and murder everything kind of weapons. It's one of those sit behind an A wall. Uh, shoot guys that come out of their cover or you get rid of those guys who are running around it's one of those area denial weapons because it's got 80 bullets you're you're not going to be running out of uh rounds anytime soon um it's easy to control um yeah so it, it's just a great weapon so yeah let's go on to the l star and i'm going to be giving that a b the L-Star is good, I mean, it, it's no doubt it is good, but it's got some problems that keep it from becoming an A. For one, it's rounds travel uh, as projectiles, which means you have to lead your shots at longer range. Um, that is its one problem that I think keeps it from being an A, um, but everything else with it having infinite ammo, that's pretty nice. You don't ever really have to reload it as long as you don't overheat it, which is great. That That's a big upside. Reloading kind of sucks. Every weapon's got to do it except for the Devotion. I mean, not the Devotion, the, the L-Star. Um, its damage is good. Its hip fire is great. Its recoil is very, very manageable. The only problem that I think it has is just its travel time. If it was a bit faster or just a hit scan weapon, which I don't think they're ever going to make it uh, B, it would be much, much better. But as it stands now, I think the L Star is a B. The Devotion is a B. Plus. It used to be S tier, definitely the best weapon in the game when it first came out, along with the Hemlock. It was easily one of the best weapons. But now, since they have nerfed it, I think it's uh, it's fine the way it is. Um, its ramp up is great. Uh, being able to put out those bullets insanely fast is awesome. Its damage has been properly brought into, uh, definitely has been brought down 
in that it's not stupidly overpowered anymore. Um, it's got good ADS, good ADS recoil, uh, easy to control in that sense, but I think it's hip fire is a bit too good still. You can definitely use it as one of those run and gun weapons, just less less effective than it was. It's its damage will hinder you in that sense, but I still think it's good in both of those areas where it is an okay run and gun weapon. It's not the best. Definitely think it outclass it gets outclassed by the car and the R97 in that sense, but it's also one of those good uh, hunker down and lock down an area from your enemies kind of weapon. So B plus, it's it's an average weapon. I'll give it that. It is a pretty average weapon. Next, we come to the sniper rifles, and we'll start with the Kraber. Some people will yell at me for this, but I am going to put the Kraber at a B minus, and it barely scrapes out a B minus. Frankly, I think I should have put it in the C, but I'll explain why I don't. It's got terrible fire rate. It's got a terrible round capacity. You got four rounds. Um, it, it bolts the weapons so dang slow. I mean, Chernobyl will be inhabitable again by the time you finish bolting this weapon. Uh, the only reason that I would ever suggest using this is it's one-shot kill. If you can aim, if you can aim with the Kraber, it's a lot of fun, um, and and it will reward you in that sense. But in terms of an actual weapon, I think any other weapon would be great if uh, if you're trying to win. Kraber is one of those fun guns, which is why I'm not putting it in a C. Also, with its damage, uh, Kraber is definitely one of those fun guns that you take out when you're destroying the enemy or when you're just not going to take the game seriously. And in that sense, it's good. But if you're trying to win, the Kraber is not going to help you. If you're in one of those sweaty, uh, oh my gosh, we're $50 away from winning a bounty hunt game, the Kraber is not going to help you in that sense. You you definitely want to take any other weapon or any other sniper rifle for that sense. Uh, if, you're, if you're dead set on using a sniper rifle, take any other sniper rifle except the Kraber. But it is an okay weapon. It's not bad. It's not completely unusable. It's it's good in that sense. Um, next, we're going to come to the double take. I'm going to put that at a B plus, and it, it is only at a B plus merely because the DMR exists. Um, the DMR does everything better than the double take, which is why the double take is at a B plus. Um, it's got good damage. It's a two shot kill if you don't headshot. It one shot headshots. Um, it's got a travel time, which kind of hinders it. Um, yeah, it's, it's fine where it is. I mean, it'll kill the enemies. It, it does good damage, but I believe that the DMR is just better. It, it does everything better. It, it, DMR's got a faster fire rate. Um, it's not a projectile. Um, yeah, the double take just... It's outclassed by the DMR. It's not. It's not a bad weapon. It's. It's kind of in the same area that the Volt is in, where there are weapons that do its job better. It's not that it's a bad weapon. It's just outclassed, which is why I'm putting it at a B plus because it is usable, but it's outclassed. So, yeah, we're gonna go to the DMR next. I'm going to rate that as an A. Surprisingly enough, I believe the DMR is an A. Um. It's definitely the best sniper rifle in my eyes because it's hit scan, so it doesn't have travel time. It one shot headshots like the double take, and it's a faster firing. It's got a tiny bit better hip fire, but why would you ever be using a sniper rifle to hip fire? It's it's definitely not a running gun weapon. It um it's semi automatic, so it's got a yeah. You don't have to bolt the weapon every time you fire it. And it's got a decent magazine capacity. So, in terms of sniper rifles, I still believe the DMR is the best sniper rifle. Uh, if you if you want to use any sniper rifle, definitely use the DMR. Because it's just better in every sense. At least in my eyes. I'm sure all of you, other, all of you people who are Kraber lovers will just roast me saying, Oh, Taco, you're, you're such a terrible Kraber player, so that's why you, you like the DMR. I like the Kraber, guys, alright? I like the Kraber, but I think the the DMR is the best sniper rifle, hands down, not really up for argument. Well, 
it's somewhat up for argument, but I think it is the best. Moving on, we're going to come to the two shotguns, the EVA 8 and A+. It is it is a great close-range weapon. Um, it's got great fire rate, great damage, great everything. It'll blow everybody away at close range, sucks at long range. Um, it, it's so good. It's such a good weapon. Some people with the, uh, the spread increase that that happened uh, i've heard some people say oh my gosh the eva 8 is totally worthless now and no no it's not it's just harder to hit at range which i think is totally fine because a shotgun's not meant to be used at range it's meant to be run and gun get close to your enemies blast them full of buckshot and then run away and frankly that all it did was make that part of it better it's easier to hit at close range you just gotta think of the glass half full so EVA 8, A+, plus, definitely a good shotgun, use it. The Mastiff, or, other, or as people like to call it, the Meme Stiff. Not gonna lie, I think it's one of the worst weapons in this lineup. Um, so I'm gonna put it at AC. Maybe AC-, minus, but it comes in as our first C weapon. In terms of close range, the, the EVA 8 does everything better than it. Um... It's hard to hit, uh, well, not really hard to hit, but it goes in a horizontal spread, so it, it doesn't have that great range. I mean, it's okay at range, it's better. If you want a more ranged shotgun, then use it, but I mean, if, you, if you're going for something at range, you can use the sniper rifles, the assault rifles, the SMGs even do a better job. The Volt would do a better job at range with this one. It's got a slow fire rate. Um, it's got low rounds. It's only got, I think, four rounds in its uh, in its magazine or, or clip or wh whatever you want to call it. Um, it's just outclassed by everything else. I, I I use it for fun. It's it's a fun weapon to use, but it's not a good weapon to use, which is why everybody calls it a meme, because it's just a meme gun. It's it's bad. If you can do good with it, then you're godlike, but it's just a bad weapon, and I wouldn't advise you using it unless you just don't feel like taking the game seriously, or if you're just having fun, which I'm okay with, because fun is fun. It's a video game. It's supposed to be fun. Anyway, we're going to move on to the Grenadier weapons. Uh, the SMR. As much as I would love to put this in an A, uh, I know a lot of people aren't as good with this weapon as I would like uh, to believe, so I'm going to put it at a B. Because the SMR is great if you can aim. It's a projectile weapon. Um, it's a two-shot kill, whether it's amped or not. Um, and it's th the main thing about it is that it's so good at killing Titans. Oh my gosh. You will shred Titans faster than maybe any other anti-Titan weapon could. So uh, that is what it's good at. I mean, and it's good at killing pilots too, obviously. It's a two-shot kill. But it's much harder to do because its explosion radius is like one or two pixels across. So if you can't hit them directly, they're going to kill you. And that can really suck when you're first starting to use it. it when I first started using it, I was terrible with it. I was just spraying everywhere. They were running around on the walls, destroying me. Any, anything, anything can do it better in the sense of, of aim. But the SMR, not a bad weapon. I would advise you to use it. But if you can't aim, then, well, you're just going to have a bad time with it. And that's why I'm putting it at a B. I love it, but it's a B. Coming to the EPG, the blue balls weapon. Um, I'm going to put this at a B+. Uh, it's good at what it does, and that is just murdering the pilots. Um, and decently okay at anti-titan, but at that point I think you should use your anti-titan weapon and not the EPG. Um, but it's good at what it does. I think it's a better Kraber in the sense that it's one of those slow firing, low rounds, but high damage kind of weapons. I think it does that better in certain situations. Kraber is better at range, but the EPG... The EPG will still get that done. It leaves room for error, unlike the SMR, because the EPG's got a pretty big explosion radius, so you can splash them, but it's much harder to do. If you can get a, as good with this weapon as, like, maybe STN does, oh my gosh, that guy's so amazing with this weapon, then 
you will be godlike and you will be just turning everybody into mush. But if you can't do well, if you can't like aim well, even even with the splash, the splash will still get you killed sometimes in that it doesn't it takes more shots to kill than directly hitting them, but it's still a good weapon. Which is why I'm putting it at a B plus, because it's a good weapon and uh and it leaves room for error, unlike some of the other uh, Grenadier weapons or just any of the weapons in general. So it's good if you can't aim. <laughs> it's one of those, if you can't aim weapons, you can just use this one. But uh, I think some weapons do the whole splashing things a bit better. So let's go to the softball. I'm going to put this at a B. Now the softball is good at what it does. And that is killing uh, groups of minions, which is like the grunts. So it's great for attrition and bounty hunt and that it can kill the grunts and the minions very fast. And it also destroys uh, ground-locked pilots in that it'll totally massacre pilots that are not moving. If they're not on the walls, then the softball will clean them up very nicely. But if they are moving fast, it is much harder to aim this weapon in that its explosion radius is doesn't do a lot of damage. Uh, you want to directly hit them if you can. Um, but it's not forgiving in that sense. So if you have a pilot that is jumping, like if you're in one of those situations where you come up upon somebody and you're both double jumping trying to evade each other, the softball will just not do that as well as maybe some other weapons will. Um, if you're going for the direct hit. I mean, you can splash them, but it's much harder to do. Like the EPG would do a better job in that sense if you're trying to splash in that situation. Um, but it's not a bad weapon. It's good at what it does. And that is good enough in my eyes. But it only puts it as a B. So, Grenadier, last one. We're going to come to the Cold War. Easily one of my favorite weapons. <laughs> um, I've got like a thousand kills with this one. I'm going to put the Cold War at an A-. minus. I think it is the best Grenadier weapon in the terms of killing enemy pilots and uh, minions. Easily the worst one for the Titans though, but I don't really use the Cold War for that. Anyway, um, the Cold War is kind of a better softball in my eyes. It kills both moving pilots along walls and it kills uh, ground locked pilots that aren't moving and also kills... Uh, the minions very quickly because of how big is it, its explosion radius is. Um, if you're if you're moving uh, along a wall and you see another guy coming to get you, the Cold War will clean them up very easily because it's got four shots. Their their explosion radius is is huge and they're much easier to hit. So yeah, a Cold War is a very good weapon. You're probably seeing me using it a lot in this weapon, or not weapon, uh, these clips, these older gameplay clips. Um, and it just goes to show how powerful this weapon is. It, it, It's bad when they're in the air. You want them on the ground when you're using this weapon, and that's where the Cold War will shine. But if they're staying in the air, uh, <laughs> good luck trying to kill them. You better switch off to your pistol because you will not be killing anything while they're in the air. Cold War, A-, minus, good weapon. <coughs> anyway, we're going to come to the pistols now. I'm going to rate the pistols as an A. Um, or most of the pistols as an A. <laughs> uh, dang, I didn't even introduce one. Um, yeah, most of the pistols, pretty good. Um, except for one, maybe two. Uh, let's get right into it, though. The Mozambique, I'm going to rate that as an A. The Mozambique is a great weapon, especially with its recent buffs to its damage and its fire rate and the fact that it's automatic now. Like, it's such a good weapon. It's a better Mastiff in every sense that it gets more rounds off, it does better damage, it has a better fire rate, and it has more, uh, it has more rounds to have in it. So, um, it just outclasses the Mastiff in every sense. So... It's a good weapon, not great at range, but it is a shotgun weapon after all. So, it's good. Uh, we'll leave it at that. An A weapon. Wingman Elite. Uh, this is going to come out to an A minus. Um, it's good. It's it's very good. 
Um, it one-shot headshots. It is hyper accurate, 100% accurate in every sense. Um, good for range. Uh, yeah. So the only problem that I have with it is that if you can't aim, this weapon will just completely miss everything. If you can't aim, you will get dunked on by any scrub with an R97 in any sense or or Kraber or, or anything really that's the only problem that i have with the wingman elite if you can't aim it's bad uh a minus weapon though now i'm very sad to say but the regular wingman how you have fallen from glory the wingman comes down to a c minus probably the worst weapon i think you could ever use um it's just, it, it's so bad. It's a three-shot kill. Its fire rate is is abysmal. Um, you know, it's just outclassed by the other pistols. It's, the P2016 is it but better. All right, it, it is also a three-shot kill. So, in that sense, why would you ever use the wingman, which fires slower and does the same amount of damage than the p2016 which kills in the same amount of time but faster fire f fires faster and it also has more rounds so the question is just why would you use the wingman it, it's hard to aim uh you have to hit your play your your uh you have to aim down sights with this weapon because its hip fire is just abysmal it's just it, it used to be so good when when it uh, when the pistols weren't nerfed back in uh, whenever they nerfed the pistols, I forget when they did. Uh, it was it was good, um, but now it's just just why would you ever use this weapon? It's so bad. Oh, and if you slap a silencer on this weapon, it is easily garbage. Just F tier. Don't ever use it. Uh, it it's worse than the Mastiff, maybe. That, that that's how bad I think this wingman is. Just don't ever use it. Just it's so bad. Now, uh, we'll come on to a better pistol, the P2016. Oh, mwah, such a good weapon. I'm going to put this at an A. Um, it's a good weapon. It's definitely one of those spam cannons where you you uh, run out of weapon or not run out of weapons, uh, run out of ammo on your primary, and you whip this baby out, and you just unload. It is, it is good for that. It, even as a primary, it's actually pretty good. It's It's got great damage. You put amped weapons on this, it'll two-shot anybody. Um, it's a good run-and-gun weapon. It's hip fire is pretty okay. Uh, it's just it's just good. It's dependable. And that's why I like the, the P2016 so much. It's just, it's just so good. Uh, now, <laughs> we come to the meme weapon itself, uh, the RE45. Now, this might be a little bit surprising to you all, but I think this is better than the Wingman. Uh, I'm going to put this at a B-. Now, its damage is abysmal. Everybody knows it. The, the, the RE45 is a terrible damage weapon. But I don't think that's really what it's used for. That If you're using it as a primary, then you're just using it very wrong. It's one of those weapons that is a finishing off somebody. Uh, maybe you you pull out uh, your mastiff and you shoot him, but it doesn't it doesn't like automatically kill them. And then you whip this thing out and finish him off, or like one of those panic weapons where someone surprises you and you whip it out and you spray everything in sight and you try and murder somebody, uh, like caught with your pants down kind of weapon. So it's good in that sense, but it only comes out to a B minus merely because its damage is just so bad. It's it's such a bad damage weapon. It's it's maybe possibly the lowest damage in the game per bullet. Like that is how bad the damage is. But I think it's fine in it its of itself. The RE45. I think P2016 taking that would be better if you want one of those spam things. But the RE45, it, it it's fun to use, and in that I think it's fine. So yeah. That is the RE45. B minus. It's decent. Okay, let's talk anti Titan weapons. The first one up, the charge rifle. I'm going to put this at an A plus. It is a very, very good weapon. 
And why is that? Well, considering that it's a laser beam that can pretty much kill anything with enough shots, that's pretty good, at least in my eyes. Uh, it's got decent damage against Titans. Um, it's great for that long range picking away at the Titans, just kind of like annoying them. Um, it's a one shot to the pilots when you don't have the charge hack on it, so it's, it's a great sniper rifle, to be completely honest. It's actually better than some of the sniper rifles in uh to me at least it's great for goosing the pilots uh when when they're coming out like uh they're ejecting and you're just sitting there and and you decide uh you know i don't want that guy to exist anymore you whip out the charge rifle and the charge rifle will do that very nicely for you uh i just wish my aim was as godlike as pan's was but i might get there someday point is charge rifle a plus very good weapon use it the MGL, I will put at a B. It's good. It, it's it's good. Definitely good. But would I choose it over one of the other ones? I would say no. The MGL does decent damage. It uh, It's good for that like indirect fire, like you're in a building or like you're in one of the buildings in Boomtown and there's a Titan trying to crouch down and shoot you in the face and steal your lunch money it's good for just indirectly firing out because the magnetic grenades will obviously get to the titan and explode but in other senses it fails in that range department say uh the titan's on the other side of forward base kodai what the charge rifle will let you do is is reach out and get them but the mgl will just be like eh, not gonna happen bud you better get yourself over there if we're gonna do anything against him uh, and it's kind of got a slow reloads, kind of low magazine. I mean, it, it's okay. Let, let's just say the MGL is okay. But would I choose it over anything else? Not really. The Thunderbolt. I'm going to put it at a B plus. If this was a couple months earlier, I would have said it's total garbage. But now that they've buffed it and given it its own kind of like a, like niche in and of itself, uh, the Thunderbolt's good now. What the Thunderbolt does is be annoying. It is so annoying. It is easily the most annoying weapon to fight when you're a Titan because it does enough damage to warrant a response. Like, I think it does somewhere like a thousand damage, maybe. It does enough to warrant a response from the Titan, but it's not enough to be like, oh crap. It is this 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 is destroying my Titan. I need to find whoever is doing this. It's it's annoying, in that it just slowly 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 picks away at your health and 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 then the pilot's always you know he's running around and he's shooting this thing. It, it it's so annoying, gosh. And that's why you should use it. It's not because of its damage. It's not because of its its uh kind of other average stuff, average reload and average anything else really everything else is average it's just that it's so annoying to fight against and that's what is good about it it's so annoying uh thunderbolt b plus though the archer heavy rocket uh i will put this at an a this is a good weapon when uh when your enemy is not very attentive it's got it does the highest damage in the game or per shot i think it does somewhere to like 2500 to 3000 damage so that's a full that's a full bar of health just straight away and amp the amp this thing it'll it'll just decimate the enemy uh it's a lock on weapon though so it only is good against titans uh so that's i mean it's good in and of itself there i mean it is called an anti-titan weapon for a reason but the archer is good at what it does and that is just dishing out damage and stealing their lunch money pretty much <laughs> um the only problem that i find with it and which is why i only put it at an a is that the enemy titans will know when you're locking on and they can also stop your rocket and sometimes even turn it against you if if, if uh, the ion uh, catches it in her vortex shield and just sends it right back at you you know then you're screwed so the archer can be easily turned against you and that's why it's not an A plus or S, but because of its raw damage, I put it at an A. Now, 
let's go on to the ordinances. Starting off, the first one will be frag grenades. My personal favorite. I love to take these things pretty much everywhere. And I will put them at an A. They are very good. They are great for those... Uh, those close encounters where you're running out of ammo, you whip one of these things out, you you cook it for a little, and then you throw it, and they're most likely going to be dead because its explosion radius is so large, its damage is so big, and it's just easy to use. Sometimes I find myself using these as my primary weapon because of how good they are. You can just Kobe these across a map, and you're sure enough to kill something and or do something to something, even if it's a Titan. It does like... 300 damage to a titan it's it's something it's not great but it at least does something so frag grenades i would suggest anybody use them and which i really hope some people do because not a lot of people use this because it is outshadowed by our next ordinance which is the arc grenade otherwise known as cancer in a ball i will rate this at an a plus they may have nerfed this thing in october but it is still so freaking annoying to fight against it blinds you, it slows your movement down, it basically makes you a sitting duck, which is why it is so good. It's good against the Titans too, because it blinds and slows them down. Their systems are going haywire, you know, you can do anything you want, really. The Titan can't see you. It is so hard to see. You could jump on its back, steal a battery, and run away. If, you're, if you have, like, cloak on, you're gone. Arc grenades just allow you to do so much, and even with their their uh, explosion time uh, delay that, that that got added in the October update, uh, it it is still good. It, it's still a great weapon. I would advise you n not to use it because of how just annoying it is to use, but it's good, and that's why a lot of people use it. And I can't really blame them. Moving on to the Fire Star, it is an A minus. Uh, great damage. Uh, it attaches to people, so it, it's really it looks cool when you when you like directly hit someone and then they're just dead and and you you can throw on your sunglasses and just look freaking awesome because the fire star lends a very cool uh, style of play. It's got great damage. It can one shot any pilot that's stupid enough to stand in it. It attaches to the Titans, and it's, it can uh, blind them if you get in on their optics. Uh, yeah, it's just really good. The only reason that I'm putting it at an A- minus is that it is the slowest recharging uh, ordinance in the game. I don't know how long it takes, but it is still the slowest recharging, and you only have one charge of it. So once you use it, you're going to have to, you know, wait the time to use it again. So... Uh, whereas, like with frag grenades, you can just get those uh, really quick and just you can have them again. But the Firestar, not a bad weapon. Definitely, uh, definitely take it out once in a while. The Gravity Star, I'm going to put in an A- as well. It has pretty much the same problems as the Firestar in that it's a very slow charging, single use kind of stuff. And then you have to wait for it. But it's great. Uh, probably... It does the whole making pilots sitting ducks like the arc grenade a bit better in that it just completely traps them and then does damage to them. Um, and one problem that I find with it is that it's just not good against titans either. Unless, you know, they're doing the whole ejecting, you throw a Rav star, they, they get trapped by it and explode, especially if they have the, the nuclear ejection on. That part's fun, but in terms of just doing damage to titans, the Grav star completely sucks. Um, and that's why it's also at an A minus because it has that going for it. But in terms of doing what it does, which is trapping the enemy pilots and uh, denying area from uh, for allowing pilots to move and to wall run and get themselves uh, get their momentum up, it does that very well. I know capture the flag players absolutely love this because you can pretty much stop a flag runner in his tracks just by you know doing a careful lead. Of where to throw this thing, he is done. You, you've got your flag back. So, Graf Star, definitely a good uh, ordinance. Electric Smoke, I am going to put this at a C minus, possibly a D. Uh, this is trying to be the Fire Star, it's just worse in that 
it goes away too quickly it takes too slow to throw it charges really slowly um it doesn't do that great damage against titans it, it does something but i would prefer a fire star in any other sense uh instead of an electric smoke grenade it is just it's abysmal it's just not good just use a fire star it, it, the fire star is better in that sense the electric smoke needs a buff but i don't think it's going to get a buff so sorry to say the electric smoke's kind of worthless um now we come to the satchels i'm gonna put the satchel at a b minus the satchel it's not the best anti-pilot weapon it's kind of slow to throw and it takes a, it takes too long to you know pull up the detonator as in like any pilot who's just got twitch reflexes would be able to kill you before you can detonate the explosive and i don't think that's what it was originally for i mean you can do it i know by no means can you not do it you you can do it but the satchel is good at killing titans because it is just got crazy damage against it i i don't know the exact number i think it's somewhere like 2000 damage that's almost a full bar of health so if you're looking for an ordinance to completely destroy titans uh, if titans are really really bothering you if it's like one of those uh attrition matches where it's like six titans versus six meaty pilots satchels will uh, get the job done uh, and that's why they come in as a B minus because they're kind of average against pilots, but they're great against um, they're great against Titans. So I'm gonna keep it at that. Satchels B minus. Now we're gonna come to the tactical abilities. Not very surprisingly, all of them are really good, even Hollow Pilot. But let's start off with Pulse Blade. Uh, it's going to come in as an A+, you know, being able to see your enemies through walls and on the map in real time, seeing their every direction and movement is pretty good in an FPS shooter. Uh, being able to know where your enemies are, obviously very good. Uh, it's very, it's not as slow to charge anymore. It's a pretty wide range, actually. I think they should nerf this, the range of the pulse play just a little bit. I think it is a bit too much, to be completely honest. Um, but yeah, Pulse Blade is very good. Definitely use it. Slap Power Cell on there if you just want all of your enemies to never be able to hide from you ever again. Also, an anti-cloak thing, so that's pretty good too. Uh, speaking of cloak, we're going to come to cloak next. Cloak is an A-. minus. Um, since it's bug where it turned cl the cloak user into a mosaic on a... Uh, on a titan basically allowing you to see where the cloak players are going which is completely negating what cloak does uh since that got nerfed or not, not nerfed uh got removed from the game where that bug got patched uh cloak is good it hides uh being able to not uh be seen by your enemies especially the titans is very good if they, if they can't see you they can't shoot you so that's pretty good i mean it's not great against pilots. Well, it's okay against pilots. It's it's you can still be seen, but cloak was definitely made to counter titans, and it does that very effectively, which is why it is an A minus. Because if you want to go uh, jump on a titan's back and steal its battery and then run away, you can do that. It's it's pretty easy to do when you have cloak on. With any of the other stuff, you can jump off. They're gonna turn around and blast you with a forty mil. Because, God forbid, you took a green battery from them. But with Cloak, you can get away. Might as well call it the Battery Thief, because that's what I use it for. Grapple. A+. Plus. My gosh, is this a wonderful, wonderful tactical. Being able to Spider-Man your way around the map is a very good thing. You can pretty... And on certain maps, you can get yourself across the map in literally 10 seconds with the right amount of swinging and just momentum and angling yourself correctly. You can get yourself to the enemy spawn as the match is starting. How good is that? With its recent going back to two charges, it is back in its full glory. It's still good. It, you can get yourself to the top of the buildings really quickly. 
And it just plays to Titanfall's wonderful uh, uh, parkour and running around, you know, on walls kind of thing. I, I forget the word for it, but you, I think you all know what I'm talking about. And that it is, it just enhances your movement so much better. And that's why Grapple is so good. Now we come to Stim. Again, Stim is an A+. Plus. Being able to run at the speed of sound. I mean, I'm exaggerating, but... You run really freaking fast when you activate Stim. You are balls to the wall, shooting across the map. Uh, pretty much almost hard to hit with anything that's not like a shotgun or like a Cold War. And you regenerate health. That's pretty good too, you know, being shot. You click the Q button or whatever the default button for uh, or activating tactical abilities is. And you're regenerating your health. And the other guy isn't. He's, he's not regenerating health unless he's got stim too, but point is being able to regenerate your health and run across the map Insanely quickly is a very good thing and that's why stim is an A plus A wall uh, I'm gonna put that in an A minus now that it's destructible and uh, It can be yeah destroyed and you can pretty much flank from its sides. It's pretty easy to counter, but it's still good Uh it's a wall that protects you and makes your bullets into better bullets. That's pretty good. I mean, if you don't see the value in that, I, uh, I guess you're not very smart in the brain when it comes to Titanfall, but I'm sure you'll figure it out eventually. Point is, being able to have uh, better damage, better damaging weapons, but while also keeping yourself safe is pretty good. Uh, doesn't, it's not really good against Titans anymore since they can just pretty much sneeze on it and you'll be just fine. Uh, you're not, you'll forget that actually. You will not be just fine. They will sneeze on it and it will be gone and then you will be gone. Um, but point is, A Wall is still good. It's still a good web, uh, tactical, but um, since it's not just uh, since it's not indestructible anymore, I'm putting it at an A minus now. We come to phase shift now. Everybody's everybody's favorite tactical to hate on, and for good reason too. I'm gonna put it in an A. If it still had two charges, um, it would be at an A plus, possibly S tier. Being able to get out of a gunfight by just clicking the tactical button, phase yourself into another dimension, maybe move behind whoever you were shooting, and then reappear all of a sudden is pretty good. All right. Here, let me let me just give you an example of why phase shift is so good. All right, so you come up, up come up to some rando. He's running around. He starts shooting you in the face. You clutch your left hand and you phase into another dimension. Um, you're completely invulnerable. You can reload your weapons. I don't think you regenerate health anymore in the phase realm, but uh, you are completely invulnerable. You can't be killed anymore for all of maybe one two seconds and you can you're free to move anywhere you want uh, you move behind him and you come out of the phase realm he doesn't see you you shoot him in the face that's pretty good being able to take yourself out of a gunfight is very good but the only reason it is at an A right now is because it only has one charge and thank the good Lord for it because when it was a two charge thing Oh, it was just insane to fight against. It was so annoying. But phase shift, I am putting it in an A. Hollow pilot, as I'm sure Frothy would probably disagree with, I'm putting Hollow Pilot at a B. Because I think it is good enough in that it's usable. But I think, you know, all the other uh, previous tacticals that I just mentioned completely uh, outclass it. Like, oh, you have oh you have your wall hack knife. You got your turn invisible for like twenty seconds thing. You have your Spider Man grapple. You've got oh you want to run as fast as Sonic, um, tactical. You have the uh, the invincibility wall. I mean I'm exaggerating there, but still. And then you have your phase into another dimension, completely invulnerable. Reload your weapons, basically, uh, recharge for two seconds, tactical. So. And then you have your, oh, you can make a clone of yourself that can fool your enemies into thinking it's you. I mean, that's good. I know some people get bamboozled still a lot. But in terms of 
anything else. I would rather use anything else as a tactical than hollow pilot. It's only a B because it is usable and it can still work. I've, I've made Titans believe that that was me. Uh, it just requires more thought into uh, you when you use it, where like where you're going to put a clone, okay? You're gonna, you know, am I gonna put a clone down this hallway and maybe see if someone's there? Um, you can't just like press your tactical button and then instantly win. That's basically how all the other tacticals work. Uh, the hollow pilot, you have to actually think. And that's why I'm putting it at a B. But it's good still. And I'll leave it at that. Hollow pilot is a B. Lastly, we are going to come to the Titans. Our, you know, the main box art uh, advertisement, you know, being able to pilot a giant robot. That's what we all came here for. And I'm here to talk about all seven of the Titans. All of them are pretty good. None of them are C rankers. I think they can they're all good in their own situations. And let's start off with the first one. Ion. She is an S. I still think she is the greatest Titan. She's good in every situation. Uh I borderline overpowered with her laser shot. She's just good in every situation. You can put her oh uh oh do you do you want to snipe someone across the map? Oh you can just use laser shot. Um is Legion coming trying to steal your lunch money with all of his uh, 140 rounds of justice? Oh, well, you have the Fortidex shield, so you can just take all of his bullets and throw them right back at him. He's probably down for the count, and then you get to rip him out of his cockpit. So that's nice. Um, well, what about pilots? Well, you know, you have the laser tripwire, which has an explosion radius about as large as Jesus' love for the world. And... Um, so any pilot who wants to jump on your back, well, he's going to have a rough time because he's going to be blown into Kingdom Come. Well, what about North Star? You know, she's going to be, uh, she she can shoot you across the map and, and uh, you can't really do anything about that. Well, you have Vortex Shield and, you know, she's you're far away so you can just get out of the way. She pretty much counters every Titan there is. Uh, and that's the problem with Ion is that she's she's good against everything. And that's why she's an S. Next, we're going to come up to Scorch. Um, Scorch, bud, I love you. You're, you're, you're my favorite Titan to play. You were the first Titan that I ever started playing. But I'm sorry, dude. You're just not as good as the others. You are a B-. I'm putting Scorch as a B- Titan. Scorch is an area denial guy. But he's an area denial guy done executed kind of poorly he's got he's he's the first ogre titan you'll uh, unlock which means he's got the most health but he's also the slowest uh titan out there and the problem with scorch is that he's a close range titan but he has trouble getting close to close range you could use your shield your your thermal shield to block all of your enemies uh fire but you lose your basic, your your main damage source. The, the thermal shield does the most damage uh, to other titans. So if you use your thermal shield, you lose your main damage source, and then you're just taking damage. Uh, you can use your, your insane amount of health, but as soon as you get close, if you have two bars of health and they have four, you know, it's kind of hard to, to kill them when you only have two bars of health. So... Yeah, you're kind of screwed then. See, there's another close range Titan, which is Ronin, but he has the ability to get to close range and still be okay because Ronin is really fast. But, you know, if you make a Scorch really fast then, but he's also got a crap ton of health, then he's imbalanced. So that's Scorch's problem is that he has trouble getting close to your enemy. He has to like rely on his enemies not knowing where he is and getting behind them and surprising them. He wants to be that flanker titan, but he's just so darn slow. Like, he's so fat and so slow, and that's his problem. He's got great damage though. His thermite launcher can be decent with range if you know how to aim it. Um, His incendiary traps will just completely melt any titan standing in it for more than like three seconds um and his 
firewall is great for denying area to his enemies. Like I said, he's an area denial and uh, area denial titan, and also a flanker titan. But the problem is, is just getting close to them. So he's great on certain maps. He needs the map to play to him as well as of right now. Scorch needs the map to play to his strengths. He can't make the map work for him like, uh, you know, another Titan like Ion or our next Titan, Northstar. Uh, but as of right now, Scorch needs a little bit of, of a buff right now. I, I, he's good, but he just needs a little bit more help getting to his enemies. And that's the problem with Scorch. Uh, moving on, we're going to talk about Northstar. Northstar is an A. She is an A war, uh, not warfare, uh, Titan. She's an A Titan. Um, she's the long range sniper Titan. She's the glass cannon, pretty much. She, her plasma railgun can take off a bar of health with one shot, not even a critical. I'd say that's pretty good if you ask me, you know? Being able to take away your enemy's health and then run away is pretty good. She's the fastest, uh, titan in the game i believe i don't know the actual numbers but i think she is the fastest but she is also the the crumbliest uh titan in that she's only got three bars of health and the le the least amount of armor on her so she's good at what she does and that is long range damage and then running away but if she she's easily countered which is why she is an a because if you can get close to her and she screws up her positioning and she doesn't run away when she sees you trying to come and beat her up. If she doesn't run away, um, then she's screwed in that sense. But she is able to be countered. And frankly, that's okay. North Star is a good Titan. That's what I'm just trying to say. Next, we come to Ronin. Ronin, I will put as an A-. Possibly an A, but... I'm putting it at an A- minus because I think he is the hardest Titan to master and that he's very easily killed if you don't know what you're doing. Uh, his abilities are great. He's definitely that hit and run Titan. He's basically Scout from Team Fortress, just a giant robot with a huge freaking sword and a shotgun. So that's pretty nice. He... He's also the lowest health in the game, tied with Northstar, but he's also incredibly fast. Um, his playstyle uh, plays to that hit and run, but it's kind of hard to do that in that you have to basically regulate when you're coming out of sword block to block all of your enemy's damage, or at least uh, reduce it by a lot. You have to... Be careful when you do that, because if you pull it out at the wrong time, uh, if you pull out your shoddy uh, to shoot them, it can punish you severely because you only have three bars of health. So Ronin is playing mind games with your enemies. He is a disruptor of the enemy's uh, ability to you know, keep fighting your enemies. He's kind of like that distractor, as well as that hit and run player, because... Ronan is, is very powerful when he's played correctly. Uh, make no mistake, I don't want Ronan to sound like a very bad Titan because he's actually insanely good. Um, but you have to be careful with how you play him. You can't just shoot everything into oblivion like you can with Ion and, and Northstar and Legion and, and, and pretty much every other Titan. You have to be careful with Ronan. But the mere fact of him existing on the battlefield is enough to freak out the opponents because if if your opponents are paying attention to your enemies then ronan's going to clean them up if they're paying attention to you then your teammates are going to clean them up so he he's good by existing but he's also very easily killed if you don't know what you're doing um but ronan is a very good titan so a minus tone we come to the next atlas chassis and Surprise, surprise, she's an A+. She is a great Titan, uh, a good medium range, kind of maybe a little bit of long range uh, capabilities. She's my favorite uh, to, to play when I'm in like one of those risky try hard situations because her 40 mil is so easy to use. It's so easy to lead. Pilots will be dying for days. You know, actually just ask anybody I play Titanfall Tuesday with 
and they'll just see why Tone is so good. Um, she's got great damage against Titans. Her tracker rockets completely decimate the enemies. Her core is basically the the I win button. <laughs> I mean, barfing out a bunch of rockets from salvos, uh, just salvos of rockets, just barfing them out on your enemy is is pretty good. Pretty good, to say the least. Um, she was by far the best Titan in the game when the game first came out, but she has since been nerfed uh, a little bit, bringing her down to an A+. But she is borderline S tier. That is, uh, she, she, she's just that good. Just use her. She's so good. Uh, I just can't say it enough, just how good she is. She's not as good as Ion, I think, because Ion dunks on her with uh, her Vortex shield being able to uh, just take all of her rockets and spit them back out at her. But Tone is still good, and we'll leave it at that. Legion, um, the tank Warframe, or not Warframe, dang it, Warframe again. Uh, Titan, the tank Titan, pretty much, with a giant gun, with a giant health pool, with a giant chassis. He's all about spitting bullets at your enemies, and he does that great. He is an A. Legion is really good where he is in that he is the proverbial clog in your enemy's sewage pipes. In that if your enemy wants to get to this area, Legion says, heck no, you don't get to go there, alright? And my 100 bullets of base basically pain uh, back me up on that. So uh, you better find another way around me because this, this, this hallway, this hallway, yeah, it's mine now, alright? Not yours anymore, it's mine. And Legion does that really well. Um, he's got great damage. His power shot can basically decimate uh, your enemy's health. His gun shield is pretty good defensively. And he can be a sniper if he wants to with his long range mode. Even though it takes up more ammo. I mean, if a North Star is harassing you, you can just, you know, press a button on your weapon. And then, oh my gosh, I can suddenly reach you now. Huh, who would have thunk it? Legion, however, is dunked on by Ion because she has a Vortex Shield, which can catch all of his bullets and throw it right back at him. So he's bad against her, and Tone pretty much dunks on him too because uh, his gun shield doesn't fully cover him and that she can splash him and then get her tracker rockets locked on him and then basically just point herself in the air and curve her rockets down on top of him so she can dunk on him too uh but legion he is good at what he does and that's basically being heavy from team fortress um yeah legion is a good titan and lastly we come to the newest titan from maybe a couple months ago monarch uh she is good she is very good she is an a um I can't stress enough how possibly borderline overpowered she is when she's built correctly. Um, but, well, you know what? Let's just break her down. Her chain gun is a hit scan weapon, so she, it's very easy to use. It does good damage against your enemies. Uh, it's able to get critical hits, so you can shred pretty much any enemy you can. You can basically generate shields for yourself automatically on demand. If you can hit anything, whereas all the other Titans have to go fetch batteries for themselves to be able to get shields. But Monarch can just basically make herself shields and just like, F you, I have shields now. What are you going to do about it? Um, she can, her rocket salvo is pretty good. I mean, it's pretty good damage. It's a one shot to any t any uh, uh, pilot and it does decent damage against uh, Titans. However, uh, not a lot of rockets in it. That's one problem with it. And then her her uh, utility basically rearms all of her abilities. Basically makes them recharge, which is pretty good. Um, her upgrades are all very good in their own sense. Uh, I'd say each of them all have their own certain play styles. And it's really dependent on how you build Monarch will be how you... Um, how you play her like do you want to be that support titan well you can uh do give uh you can give shields to your friendlies by putting energy transfer on do you want to have a lot of rockets and spit them out at all of your enemies well you can put the uh the enhanced rocket salvo on and you can and you can do that do you want to shred ion's energy shield and basically make scorch 
uh, worthless by destroying uh, the thermal and um, uh, vortex shield. Well, put arc rounds on, and then Scorch will basically be putty in your hands. Um, do you want to two-shot pilots? Well, you can just put the accelerator mod on for your third ability. Do you want to have the highest amount of health in the game? Well, you can put superior chassis on, and you can have six bars of health, which is more than any Ogre Titan could ever hope to have. Um... Monarch is good, that's to say the least. Monarch is a very good titan, and I would advise you use her. But she's bad in the sense of if you catch her when she doesn't have a lot of upgrades on, then she's screwed, pretty much. Uh, any tone can completely dunk on her because she has no defensive ability other than getting shields, which requires another enemy to be there. So... Tone and North Star and Ion can completely destroy Monarch if she doesn't have uh, her upgrades. And that's what puts Monarch at an A, because you can get her, but once she's got her third upgrade, good luck taking her down, because she's impossible to kill. Um, that will finish off this uh, 2018 Titanfall 2 Weapon and Titan Review. Uh, if you enjoy these kind of unscripted uh, talks or discussions or podcasts or whatever you want to call it, hey, uh, leave a comment, you know? I like doing these things. I like giving the my thoughts on them. And if you guys really like them, then I'll keep making them, you know? They're a lot of fun to do. Um, yeah, I'll leave it at that. I'll, I want to thank you very much for watching. I hope you've learned something or if, if you want to... If you want to discuss um, my ratings in the comments, then I'm happy to do that. Let's let's start discussing stuff. Maybe uh, maybe you guys have different point of view. I'm okay with that, you know? I want to see what you guys think. So if you want to give your ratings in the comments, then by all means, go ahead. Um, yeah, bye for now.